Now let's discuss problem C. You can read it now or listen to my explanation. In my words, you are given the number k and then an array of length 2 to the power of k plus 1. Of numbers from 0 inclusively to 4 to the power of k exclusively. You need to find two non-intersecting subsegments of this array that have the same ZOR on a segment. If we are talking about ZOR on a segment, it makes sense to talk about prefix ZORs, because each ZOR in a segment is just a ZOR of two prefix ZORs, this one and that one, because of the properties of this function. So we can rephrase the problem as follows. We need to find such four indices A, B, C, D, that A is less than B, less or equal than C, less than D because b and c can be the same, so that pref, so that the prefix zor of a, zor, prefix zor of b, is equal to the prefix zor of c, zor, prefix zor of d. Using the properties of this function, we can rephrase it as zor of those four values must be zero. It's almost as if we want to find the four values from the array which have the ZOR 0. The only thing that's different from such question is B can be equal to C. So maybe let's just initially cover this case. To cover the case when B is equal to C, we must simply find a segment of length at least 2 which has a ZOR of all values equal to 0. Again, it's almost as if we want to just find p of d and p of a from the array p such that their ZOR is equal to zero. But there is also this inconvenient additional constraint that a and d must be at least two apart. So to get rid of this constraint, I just did the following. I said that there exists an answer when a and d is one apart, only if we have a zero in our array. If we have at least two zeros in our array, then we can output those two segments as the answer. So I just initially considered that case and that's it. So now we either have no zeros in our array. In that case, we can simply search for PA and PD that have the same value. And those will be at least two apart. Or we have exactly one zero in our array. But in this case, I simply pretend to delete the zero from the array. Uh, because if the array features such segment, then it will also be a valid answer if I delete the zero from it. As long as the zero is not the only value on this segment. But if zero is the only value on this segment, then the other segment must have the zero equal to zero. And it's either of length at least 2, then we can just instead present this as our answer. Or it's of length 1, but such case is impossible because we figured out that there are no two zeros in our initial array. All in all, if we have two zeros in our array, we output them as the answer. And if there's only one zero, we simply delete it. So now we may assume that there are no zeros in our array. In this case, covering the case when b is equal to c, is just searching for a and d such that they have the same value of p. This can be simply done with the set. Now suppose we didn't find the answer. It means that all the values from the array p are different. And there are n plus 1 such values, if you also count an empty prefix, where n is 2 to the power of k plus 1. So we have this many different values of p in our array and now our task is to simply find four different values from this array p such that their ZOR is zero. And we know that there are this many of those values and all of them are different. And they are all from zero to four to the power of k which is actually two to the power of two k. So now this is the problem that we are solving. Let's present each of the values p as a binary string of length 2k. We have 2 to the power of k plus 1 plus 1 such strings. 
what comes to mind if you think that their length is 2k? The key idea is to split those strings in half. Now if you consider only the first half of each string, there are exactly 2 to the power of k different values that this half can get. So let's break all the strings into 2 to the power of k different groups. Those that start with such string, those that start with such string, such string and so on. There will be 2 to the power of k groups. Each group will contain some number of strings. And there are 2 to the power of k plus 1 strings. So the average amount of strings in the group is larger than 2. Let's remember that, but for now we will say that our strategy will be to pick a pair from the same group and another pair from the same group. And those four values will be PA, PB, PC and PG. What happens if you pick two values from the same group? Obviously their ZOR will contain all zeros in the first half. So ZOR of a pair of two strings in the same group will be 0, 0, 0 and then k bits in the right half. So now our task is to find such two pairs that they have the same ZOR. And if you consider pairs from the same group, pairs from the same group have exactly 2 to the power of k different ZORs. Because they only can have ones in the k rightmost bits. My algorithm will be extremely simple. I will just fix a group and I will consider every pair in that group. Then I will consider the next group and every pair within the next group. And so on until I find a pair which has a ZOR same as another pair already had. And if the two pairs will be from the same group, it's not a problem. Because those two pairs will never intersect. Because if they intersect, for example, PB is actually the same value as PD. Then it means that this cancels, and so it turns out that PA ZOR PC is equal to zero, which means that just PA is equal to PC, but we assume that every value in P is different. So this will never be the case. The pairs with the same ZOR will never intersect. We have to consider at most 2 to the power of k plus 1 different pairs, because there is only 2 to the power of k values the ZOR of those pairs can get. So if you consider 2 to the power of k plus 1 pairs, at least 2 of them will have the same ZOR. Now we just have to prove that there will be enough pairs. To be more precise, we can say that a pair cannot have a ZOR of 0, because all the values are different. So there are one less possible ZORs a pair can have, so it's enough to consider this many pairs. We now have to prove that there will be at least 2 to the power of k different pairs from the same group. In order to prove that, we can remember that there is more than two strings in the same group on average. In which case, the number of pairs from the same group will be minimal. Let's try to find such case. Suppose the number of strings in some of the groups is less than 2, so it's 0 or 1. Let's say that there are x strings in one of the groups and x is less than 2. It means that one of the other groups must have more than 2 strings. Let's say that some of the other groups has y strings and y is larger than 2, because on average the number of strings in the group is more than 2. I claim that if I move one string from this larger group to the smaller group, the number of pairs decreased. Because the number of pairs from the same group, if you consider only those two groups, used to be x times x minus 1 over 2 plus y times y minus 1 over 2. In other words, x squared plus y squared minus x minus y over 2. So if I increase x by 1 and decrease y by 1, this expression will become x plus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared minus x plus 1 minus y minus 1. So once cancel, x, y remain over 2. And this is equal to x squared plus y squared minus x minus y plus 2x plus 1 minus 2y plus 1. This is equal to 
x squared plus y squared minus x minus y over 2 plus x minus y plus 1. Given that x was less or equal to 1 and y was larger or equal than 3, it means that this expression is no more than x squared plus y squared minus x minus y over 2 minus 2 plus 1. Or in other words, minus 1. So it's strictly less than this. So in the case when one of the groups has less than two strings in it, the number of pairs is not minimal. If this group would have a bit more strings and some large group would have a bit less strings, then the number of pairs would be even less. So the worst case for us in terms of number of pairs is if no group has less than two strings. So each group has at least two strings, which means there is at least one pair from the same group for every group. So there are at least 2 to the power of k pairs from the same group. That's exactly what we wanted to prove. So there will be always enough pairs from the same group to find the same ZOR among two of those pairs. Then we'll take those four values of p and output their indices in the increasing order as our answer. Let's look at the implementation. I read k, I assign n to 2 to the power of k plus 1, I read the array a, I check if there are at least two zeros, then I output them as the answer, then I create the array p, which will contain pairs of prefix or and position. First prefix or is an empty prefix or, and if I have a zero in my array, I ignore it, pretend that I delete it. So I don't consider a prefix after this zero, because the zero does not exist. Otherwise, I add another prefix or. Now using the map where, I try to find the two equal values in the array pref. I see if such value already exists in the map, then I take its position as L and our new found position as R, and I claim that the semi-interval from L to R has a prefix of 0, and this semi-interval is at least of length 2, because I pretended to delete the 0 from the array. So I break this semi-interval just after one value. So I output the first value as the first segment and all the remaining values as the second segment. And then I mark was, was true and break. Otherwise, I simply add this value in the map where. If I didn't find the answer, then I continue. Now I break the values from the repref into buckets, into those groups. There are two to the power of k different groups. So to find in which group it belongs, I simply shift to the right by k. And I only add the last k bits of the value into this bucket, also remembering its position in the array. Now the array where pairs for every value of ZOR will contain a pair which has such ZOR. Initially, if we don't know such pair, it's negative one, negative one. Now we consider a bucket and a pair of values from this bucket. We name their ZOR x, and now we check, if we already saw a pair which has a ZOR X, then we put the positions of that pair and the positions of the new found pair into the array B, we sort the array B, and we output those four positions as our answer. Otherwise, we simply add this pair into the array where pairs. And we will surely find the answer at some point. That's it for today, thank you for watching, and I remind you that I give private lessons on competitive programming. If you are interested, contact me on Telegram. Goodbye.